You are listening to episode 48. This episode is brought to you by my new course, How to Dominate LinkedIn with Your Personal Brand. Do you feel like when you're on the LinkedIn platform, you're not really sure how to actually navigate it? Does it feel clunky or confusing? And do you have all these connections, but you're not sure how to really leverage those connections and how to really show up virtually in presenting your personal brand? Well, that is what this course is about. Because since September, I've gone from 1,500 connections to about 8,000 connections on LinkedIn. Not only that, I've gotten clients through my content and people have actually reached out to me to speak for virtual speaking engagements. So if this is something that you would really like to capitalize on and take advantage of and learn about, then this course is definitely for you. And you can learn about it more uh, in my show notes and I will have the link to the waitlist just for you. And now on with the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. On today's episode, I get to interview Natasia Mukwavi. I actually met Natasia through a group called Pitch Better, and she has a nonprofit in Vancouver that connects Black women. I was really excited to learn about this because I actually spent a summer in Vancouver and really enjoyed the city. And that was the only thing I didn't really see out there. And it's one of my favorite cities in Canada, actually. I just wondered if there was even a Black community out there in general, just out of curiosity. And she managed to bring them together. So she talks a bit on this episode about her nonprofit, the process of creating it, and some of the awesome results and impact that they've been able to make in the community as a result. If you are interested in starting nonprofits yourself and making an impact, making a difference, uh, you won't want to miss today's episode. Also, if you are enjoying my shows, if you have been listening to these episodes and if you feel like they have brought any value at all to your life, I would love if you could actually give me a rating on iTunes, on Apple Podcasts. And yeah, just a rating and a comment to just let me know. How are you enjoying these episodes? And what have you been learning so far through this journey that you've been taking with me as well? I would love to have that feedback and support uh, if you really feel like this is something that is bringing you value throughout your day. And without further ado, Let's get our episode going. You are listening to the Sounds of Inspiration. Welcome to the Okiki Podcast, where we make inspirational people known. Brought to you by your host, Fian O'Brien. everyone and welcome to the Okiki podcast and today I have Natasia Mukwavi and she is the founder of uh, Black Women Connect Vancouver and I'm so excited to have her on the show today. Some of you may or may not know I spent some time in Vancouver and uh, it would have been really nice to know about this group back then so thank you so much uh, for being on this show today Natasia. Natasia, Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. (laughs) And uh, if you don't mind me asking, what was your journey to becoming a founder of a nonprofit? And can you let our audience know what this nonprofit is actually about? Yeah, for sure. Um, For me, there it was an organic process. I didn't think this was something that I was going to do. I knew I was going to do something with women um, and helping the community and creating some sort of collective, but. Once I think I started to see there was a need for Black women, that's kind of when I was like, okay, this is something that I need to make sure um, becomes big for us. Um, Because as like a lot of people said, it's like, where are the Black people? And so I think like creating that kind of community 
was really important. Um, so that's kind of how that happened. It happened very organically, just saw a need in the community. And I really was developing something that I wanted for myself too. Um, and so I was like, okay, what does that look like? What am I looking for right now? And so it's a community and the black community. And so that's kind of how my journey started. Yes, for sure. And uh, were you always in the nonprofit sector? Like what was your, I guess, educational path? Yeah, um, definitely. Like even right now for work, um, I'm an executive director of a nonprofit in Surrey, British Columbia. And um, so I think for me, it was kind of like an easy transition just because I knew what you needed to do in terms of like um, how to develop a board, um, your constitution, your bylaws, like all the legal stuff that no one wants to do. It was an easy transition for me because it is my background. Um, And so I found that that was really nice. Awesome. So was that like a degree or was that master's or what was like the process of developing that foundation? Yeah, um, it was a degree. um, So I got my undergraduate, but then also I think anytime I did like, like internships or like practicums, I was always in the nonprofit field. So Mm -hmm. either working in inner city or um, some sort of helping with women. Um, I remember I did my internship in Edmonton at Hope Mission there for the women's addictions facility. So kind of got to know Mm -hmm. background. So I'm like, I know I want to work in the community. I know I want to be with women. But I think like I just testing out which one would work best. Um, and then my parents also have a nonprofit organization in Zambia called wow. Mercy Touch Mission International. So I help out there when I go back home to Zambia. So so just kind of like a variety of things kind of like brought everything together into this point. That's really incredible. So you really were exposed very early to the whole sector. And so what brought you then? Yeah. A, like what brought you to Vancouver? And why uh, Black Women Vancouver Connect? Why, why, why did you see the need for that? I moved out here when I was 18 years old. Um, so just kind of was leaving Saskatchewan at the time I graduated high school. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm definitely not staying here. Um, and so then I just <laughs> kind of like moved with my family. So that's kind of how that I moved here. Um, and why I think we just don't get represented enough. And I mean, like I said earlier, the, comfort, the comment is always like, we're all the Black people. And, and if other people are feeling that way that means more people are feeling that way so it's really just learning to create that community for um, black women and I think that we do such amazing things that we don't get recognized for and so I really want to highlight that also on top of making a community for them. Awesome and so what were kind of yeah I guess the gaps and the challenges that you felt uh, you could fill in Vancouver um, for the black community what was the initial challenge like you said, of just getting them together. Because <laughs> uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, I hardly saw Black people when I was out there. So what? how did you even yeah, begin that process of, first of all, finding the community that you're trying to bring together? You know, like, I think when I first was doing events, it was really just for fun. And it was like in my condo clubhouse. And it was like 20 people. Um, and then that's when people were like, you need to make this bigger. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I was kind of like hesitant at the time. And then as it kind of started growing, I was like, okay, people are like, make a social media account just for this. And at the time it was called Black Girl Magic. And so that's when I switched the name. Um, and then just made a social media account, decided to do like, okay. So I was thinking really focusing on mental health in the Black community, especially with women. And I was like, let me do my first event and talk about mental health. And I knew some panelists, that'd be great. Um, did a dessert night in Vancouver and 70 women showed up. So I was like, mm. and I was so underprepared. Like for me, it was like, really overwhelming because I didn't have a team at the time I didn't have like any help I'm like scrounging up my friends to help me move stuff like I was not expecting that at all and so for me it was actually really easy to create community because there was such a need in the community for it so I actually never had an issue of being like people come to my events like because it's it's something that other people are looking for wow I think that's hilarious because I think it'd be incredible to have this event like let's see who shows up we're just trying to build community and all of a sudden, 70 people show up. I would have been shocked to see that myself. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. So clearly, um, you were filling a gap. Um, it started with, like, mental health, as you were saying, too. And then when you realize, like, yes, there's a need. This crowd has shown up. Clearly, people really want this. Um, where did you kind of see the vision of this nonprofit going from there? Uh, Mm -hmm. Did it continue to have a a lane of mental health or did you see other kind of facets that it could really begin to address? Yeah, I think for me, I just really wanted to create a collective and not really pinpoint of um, like we focus on business, we focus on this. And so that's kind of where I stand on it. Um, Like when you think about America, there's a whole bunch of collectives for different things. 
Um, but in Canada, I just feel like there isn't that really. Like, for example, like, I know talking with, like, a Moy and a deal, it's like there isn't, like, an essence in Canada. Like, there's so many Black women for us to create that. And so it was kind of coming from that concept of, like, let's just create a collective um, that can encompass all these things of, like, having fun, being diverse as a Black woman, being a businesswoman, being a stay-at-home mom, like, all these things. And not having also an age limit or, um, like, a minimum age of you can join or a maximum age. Just creating something that everyone is welcome in whatever stage of life they're in. So really like a forum where they can find different topics, different yeah. things. And it's just kind of like a place where they can feel, I guess, celebrated. Um, yeah. Because like you said, we don't really have like the essence or like <laughs> all yeah. those kind of things out here. It's true. It's it's yeah. really fascinating because uh, I think we have enough of a population to have exactly. some. Like for sure, we're not the United States population, but. <laughs> There's definitely enough there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so how has the um, nonprofit been, um, like you mentioned, the, the kickoff event had a lot of people. So what are some of the adapt, uh, yeah, adaptations and changes and kind of trends you've seen with your nonprofit um, throughout the years and especially throughout COVID? Yeah, I think, um, like you said, kind of trying to figure out like which different events so a lot of times people would want to partner with us so I'm like okay we can collaborate on this event because that'd be interesting for other people so it's gone from like mental health and self-care to business um how to pitch your business to women in leadership to um um, partnering like CIBC on like um, education on what does women in wealth look like so it's been a variety of different things um, and like some other things that we're launching this year. And then also the Black Teen Conference called Empowered Black Girl. That's supposed to happen in July. So it's been like a kind of variety of things. And I think, especially during COVID, learning to pivot, I, I had a really hard time, I'm sure, what like other people did with um, transitioning into online platforms. But then I also had to remember, even though I feel this way, other people are really still looking for community. And so it's also kind of learning to shift my frame, my frame of like, it's not really about me, <laughs> even though I don't want to do an online platform. A lot of people are really craving that community at home. That's great. Um, and another thing too is, yeah. So where do you see this um, nonprofit going to? Um, I know we're still trying to figure out what's going on with the current season that the world is in, but now that you've had that experience of both the online and offline community and kind of those opportunities, um, yeah, where do you see this nonprofit going like in the next five years? Yeah, I mean, I five years, I don't know. But overall, I would love to have like a whole bunch of like little, little like Black Women Connects everywhere um, in each city or province. I would like that would be ideal. And then like world domination of it, you know, <laughs> but um, no, that's kind of like, that would be ideal. Um, and not for me to be like a leader of each group or something, but like for them to have that sense of community, I think a lot of places, um, they don't really have the structure kind of in place. And so it's not even necessarily, they can't bring people together. It's, it's just, it is time consuming and it's a lot of work. Um, but if someone already creates a structure, it's easy for them to kind of do whatever works for their city or their province once the structure is there it's easier to replicate that yeah Yeah, for sure (laughs) yeah and in light of that because uh some of our listeners may also be interested in starting nonprofits themselves so even from a practical because a nonprofit is a type of you know business entity from a practical perspective what is advice that you would give to someone who's thinking, you know, I want to create something that creates impact. Yeah, I want to form a nonprofit. Where do I even start? What are the definitions even? (laughs) If you could give us a brief (laughs) one-on-one based on your expertise. (laughs) Based on my expertise, um, I would say create a team that really is behind the vision and mission of what you're doing. So while on top of that, at the same time, you need to know what your mission and vision is. What what is, What is it you're doing? Like, when it comes to the nonprofit world, you really need to remember your why um, only because it's not going to be about you. It's going to be about your community. And that's what's going to sustain you because you're always going to remember I'm doing this for my community. So you really need to be passionate about what you're doing because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of late nights. And so when you're creating a team, make sure that they are people that will support you, surround you and things that you're not good at. So make sure people on your team with like their holes that you know you're not good at because they're the ones that are going to fill that hole for you. Um 
And then on top of that, like when you are deciding to do the board and register, there's a whole bunch of things that you have to go about, but you get to pick all those things. You get to be in control of who you get to be on your board, who you get to be on your team. So just make sure that you know that. I think that a lot of times when people get into the nonprofit world, they get scared of hearing like boards and teams because they feel like they might lose control of what their actual vision is, but it's not, not true. If you have the right people around you, you'll have your vision come to life. And a lot of things sound scary, but there's a lot of people out there you can reach out to who have started nonprofits. I mean, you can more than happy to answer any questions that people may have because it, it can be a little bit tedious work. And with nonprofit, you might not see, I guess, money come in because <laughs> it's not really a business. So that's also another thing. That's why I'm like, you need to remember your why because you're not going to make money off of it. And so, yeah, for sure. And I, uh- I think when when I even brought up the word, I was thinking of business in the terms of like, you know, those definitions, nonprofit, charity, like what's the structure, like you're saying, but absolutely like that's definitely not why people start those. (laughs) I mean, some nonprofits, as we know, are very profitable or have a lot of, you know, financing. Um, but that's definitely not how a lot of them start. And so even on that end too, um, having your why, like you said, is what will give you the, you know, persistence to keep it up. Cause you said like definitely the first five years are going to be really the foundation. So what are some of the other key things in the first five years that someone should really know about that process? Yeah. Like you said, to reach out for help. So what are some resources you would suggest to on helping them to kind of start that journey? Yeah, I mean, I think when you, especially if you want to register as a nonprofit, each province has its own rules. So you have to look into that. Um, If you can find someone that's a lawyer or someone that can do pro bono work, most times a lot of people can kind of look over your legal documents and see what that can look like. Um, In terms of creating a community nonprofit, I think that, like I said, if you know what your passion and drive is, People will follow that and it'll be easy to create a community and just be genuine in actually wanting to create community. That's usually what people are drawn to is like the transparency and if you're genuine and if you actually truly care for them to create that community around them. What are some kind of opportunities like in an innovative way that you see for nonprofits nowadays? Like I know, of course, people apply for grants and people apply for sponsorships. But what are some ideas and things that you think nonprofits should consider in ways of creating that legacy and sustainability for themselves? Like I said, when you're starting something and you're a founder, recognizing the kind of how important your team is around you, because for example, like something happens and you can't do it anymore. It continues on because you've trained the right people. You've had the right people around you. Someone else can easily kind of take that on. And I think it's just like being open-minded for other people to kind of step in to be able to help you because those are the things that create sustainability. A lot of times we can see it in nonprofit world or business world, people don't want to pass on what they have. And then it ends up crumbling because they didn't train the right people. They didn't walk alongside people during their process. Um, So I feel like that creates sustainability and legacy because you're making sure that it creates kind of a pattern of like someone else can take over. And then when it comes to like creating legacy and innovative, I think that And I know I keep stressing it, but like having people around that are different than you that can criticize you creates innovation because then you're not stuck in your own bubble of like, this is my vision. This is what I want to do because other people will kind of be like, you should try this. You should try this. And then it makes you kind of open up your mind more of what's going on. Um, So I feel like that is really important, especially during this time where everyone's trying to be creative and different, but everyone's online right now, but we're all doing the same thing. So it feels weird. So it's like, we're all just kind of like, reinventing the wheel at this time (laughs) yeah no that's a really good answer for sure and an angle that I think I didn't think of as much as you had having that team and different ideas can really create those opportunities so Mm -hmm. that's really awesome what are some of the feedback or things that you've been hearing since you started this nonprofit that maybe surprised you the most from the ladies who were benefiting from the platform you've created yeah, I think um, like hearing some women say like, it's the first time I've ever been in a room full of black women. Like that to me is like incredible. Like being able to live like your whole life in a situation where I, the minority, like those are huge things to hear and other people actually making friends and actually connecting. Like, it's kind of cool to know like people I know that are friends end up finding like one of their closest friends from like events and that's how they connected. It's like, that's really like exciting to hear when people have that. And 
just like other feedback like it makes it just be like this is what it's all about if people can not feel lonely in the city and know that there's other people in the same situation for me it's always like it's always lovely to hear and also I wanted to ask what are some of the branding collaboration opportunities that have come to you during this time as we both know obviously a lot of things socially have happened throughout this year for the black community so did that open any specific doors or kind of collaboration opportunities for your organization as well yeah it definitely has we've been able to partner with like Foot Locker we were able to partner with like other organizations CIBC and then like smaller kind of places in Vancouver or restaurants too So it's been really nice to see that happen and it has opened a lot of opportunities. I think like we were already gaining kind of traction before everything that happened last summer. But then I think that it kind of spurred because it ended up making people say like, oh, have you heard about them? Have you heard about them? So that made it easy. So it's been nice. Yeah, to see that. For sure. For sure. I guess before I wrap up this conversation, I wanted to give you a chance to share. Is there any upcoming projects or things with your nonprofit that you like our audience to know about? Right. Uh, so some of the things we're not launching until a little bit, so I can't talk about those. But I can talk about our um, Teen Girl Conference, which is happening in July, called Empowered Black Girl. So if you know any Black teen girls that are in grade 11 and 12, um, we would love to have them be all virtual. So everyone's welcome to do that. And you can find us on our website, empoweredblackgirl.com or uh, social media, Empowered Black Girl. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely have to get that link from you because I have some mentees who I would love to send that to. So thank you so much. And and where can our audience find you? Of course, I'll have this all in the show notes, but where can they find you and your organization? Yeah, so you can find us on Instagram at Black Women Connect Vancouver and our website, blackwomenconnectvancouver.com. We also have a Facebook group, so you can join that and sign up for our newsletter for events. And then if you want to find me, I'm on LinkedIn at Natasia McCoffey. Awesome. Thank you so much, Natasia, for sharing so much value with our audience today. And congratulations on your nonprofit. If I visit Vancouver, I will definitely (laughs) have to meet with you and uh, all the ladies that you brought together. So that's awesome. Uh, Thanks again for sharing with our audience today. Thank you. It was a pleasure.